Now we will continue with uh, Andreas Chrysostomou, who is the Chief Strategy Officer of Toto Theo Maritime, and he's going to deliver to us a presentation on connecting ports, vessels, and people. It's something that Toto Theo has been working on uh, very deeply. So, Andreas, where are you? You can do, and you have the countdown clock, so you're here. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful weather in Athens, and connecting people with vessels and ports, it actually, for me, means I love the weather. Why? Because ports are always been situated around rivers or the sea. And for us that we're coming from an island, we would like to see the sea when the sky is blue and the sun is sunshine. So I'm very glad to be in Athens today uh, presenting this very controversial, very uh, coming into today's being very important concept. And I will start with a bit of history, and I hope I will manage to use this equipment here. Yeah? No? How do I go forward for the slides? Thank you. Traditionally, a port was the center, and the vessels and the people were around it. Sorry for the clutter on this slide, but a port has a particular socioeconomic group of people. It has, as I already said, it's situated at shore, at sea, or river. It has a morphology where there you're going to find dry docks, warehouses, uh, custom houses, open market, and pubs. And also, you will find that this main activity is trade. And this is the lovely picture I can give historically what a port is about. The hinterland, for those of those that you might know the expression, it's the area beyond the port. And that's why today, so in essence, we have a port that assumed the role of being a gateway for the early period, and it can also be uh, where in urban environments where transactions were to place. Also, those transactions were numerous and mirrored to the multifunctional character ports had at the time. The thing that we know today is that some of the ports they transformed themselves from regional centers into intercontinental powers. And especially when the trade happens in the medieval ages, and then beyond that, and the super uh, empires came into being. And we find some of the very century old European ports to be today actually what I call a conglomerate. Uh, since the time immemorial ports have been gateways for uh, exchanging goods, exchanging peoples and ideas, and actually they were, in my understanding, a bridge between civilizations. And that's what we have today. So the little port with the specialized little people living there and their dry docks and everything, Today are actually magnificent cities. The first one on the left is, of course, Paris. And now let's, let's come to realities of today's. Around the port, there are living people. And the people they created, the hinterlands, and the people became much more engaged into society. And we have seen problems. There's a number of people today that are actually screaming that they don't want any cruises anymore. That's a lovely picture. Overcrowding in Palma, overcrowding in Venice, overcrowding in, um, in areas such as um, Barcelona of Spain. Of course, we have other people that is, they are actually taking care of the environment, and they say, save our heart, but don't create a port. There are some other people, they say, we're living next to Delta, don't create a port, I want to farm. So, on top of that, we have safety concerns, we have collision prevention, we have personal <coughs> safety, which are people continuously are complaining or are scared that something could happen. So, connecting vessels, ports, and people, once more, we have to rethink the model. We have today the commercial side, we have the society that lives around the port, and we have the environmental concerns either from the society that lives around the port or from the people that they are actually care about the environment from a remote place. 
And that's how, sometimes that's the most controversial point of view because they do know what they want, but they don't know the realities of the area that the actual environmental uh, issue or uh, incident or whatever is happening. So I will start with the environmental first. And I will go that there's a wide range of policy instruments in place today to bring the environmental concerns into being. I'll give you some examples. For example, from, from the point of view of um, uh, the ship, you might hear about the conversion called Marco. From the point of view of uh, the climate change, I'm sure you heard about the United Nations Framework of Climate Change Convention. All these kind of things are actually in place today, are prescriptive. And they're telling us, you do this, you do that, and you have this result. The, the climate uh, framework, for example, is more into a point of being somehow uh, goal-based. It's still not exactly what the environmentalists are looking for. And therefore, today, these people, because that's here, we're going to connect the vessels, the ports, and the people, are looking for new kind of instruments that they're actually, there will be public policy instruments, but they will be in a different school of thought in the sense that most probably they will create incentives for the people operating to create something which is more environmentally friendly, more environmentally touchable, and provides the results that we're looking for. It's very controversial because those ideas are rotating around instruments which are financial. <coughs> They're not going to impose penalty, but they're going to impose the levy. They might not impose the levy, but they might impose the trade in, in, in credits. So the new thinking calls on economic <laughs> instruments which can provide more flexibility for polluters to find low cost opportunities to reduce negative environmental impacts and what, uh, sorry, what bans and standards do. So in essence, we see that the people today, they go away from the punishment of the polluter and trying to be proactively punishing the polluter, if I'm using quotes, that expression, so that he or she finds ways to reduce pollution in a most economic way. After that, we have the society as a whole living around the port. And here, I will read it. We are rapidly approaching the eastern gratification inflection point where consumers demand products and services delivered anywhere at any time. The concept of connecting vessels, ports, and people has to be revamped so that goods and services are delivered in a real time, all access, and at a highly personalized approach. What I mean by that, that's, that's very digital expressionism today. You press your mobile phone, you go to Amazon, and you're asking for delivery, and you choose delivered yesterday. That's what we want today. We want everything to be done as it's been delivered yesterday. We arrive in a port, we, will, sorry, um, we go on the internet and we want to buy something, and some companies, they promised us that we were living in the same day, so the same area or the same city, they would deliver the goods within 90 minutes. And this is a very, I mean, if you go to California, 90 minutes is considered a big amount of uh, time if you're expecting a bunch of flowers. If you are expecting the supermarket, that could be 12 hours. So all this instant gratification, this is all what the new population wants today. This is what the new society is looking forward. Are we as vessels and ports actually connecting with these people? Are the millennia as we used to express them today, are they gonna be happy with the trade that the ports and the vessels are doing today? I am not sure, and that's my own personal opinion, unless we manage to revamp the model. So the model that the merchants were sitting around in the little city with their dry dogs, whatever, whatever, and the pubs might not be exactly what the society is looking to. And therefore, I'm coming to the commercial side, and that's where I'm going to give my views how this model can be exchanged. I do believe in port CDM. For those that you're not familiar with the expression, is the port collaborative decision making. It's already been used at the airports. It's already data been shared at the airports, and nobody had actually lost commercial value. In certain occasions, anonymous 
aggregated data provides benefit to everybody and it does not expose the underlying <coughs> principles of the data. That's how much time I left, right? Or, or, or is that how much time I spent? No, that's fine, thank you. I thought I only spoke for four minutes and so I got it. Here we have to say, optimization of utilization of, the cap uh, of capacity. Save money and time for evolved actors. Just do things in just in time. Shorten the turnaround. Enhance utilization of resources. Facilitate collaboration, information sharing. Provide situational awareness. And enhance predictability of poor cooperations. All these are the actors they are going to do it. All the people working, they will have more information to do their business in a faster and just in time. I'll give you a good example. You are arriving in a port and there is no berth available. Why should you wait? You might do another call somewhere else and go to that port. A very simple example would just ask the simple people to understand. Do you know why you're doing this thing, though? The society is observing you through their own applications. And they know when their car is <laughs> arriving, their container will be in port, and when they should send their persons to go and do the custom clearance. Why should I send a custom clearance person today, and then the port tells me about the ship will not come in because I had delays and so on. So port collaboration, decision making, in my opinion, would provide the connection of people, ports, and vessels Going back to a much more connected society and a much more connected society of today's, which is actually happy of what's going on. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, versus ports and people have always been connected, but new society realities are calling upon a new rethought model. It is clear that interests of society, environment, and commercial interest are the most fundamental three pillars that can be interest and that can shape the, um, this connection. The new digital era is in connection with new thinking in relation to enforceable instruments can provide the way forward. And also connecting versus ports and people is of fundamental importance for the well-being of communities, the world trade and shipping in general. And with that, I will give a punch for my company that I'm working now. We are working on Port CDM. We are working on this kind of new thinking. And we think that in certain occasions, we might be ahead of the others. And if you really want to have more information about Port CDM, please contact us at any, at any time you want. But we st I strongly, personally also believe that from my previous hearts and my previous experience, Port CDM would also solve problems of environmental issues and also issues of societies around ports. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I have a presentation on the, on the 13th of, uh, of November in IMO. What we're doing in that area, we have uh, uh, created another platform called uh, Marine Fields. It will be live very soon. It is live now, but the back end is still not live for the public. It's, pu it's, it's, it's open to certain ports to do it. And the platform actually provides for ports to input data. And the ship owner can put data, that's the ship and also other actors in the ports, like the, um, the stevedores or trucks coming in, whatever you may call those people. And it provides a full data collection platform. Af above that, everybody can come up and start building uh, applications or providing information to the public, to the owner, to the operator, to the manager. Uh, it's a count. Uh, 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 you cannot count the abilities you have. The, I don't want to do comparison, but just for you to understand what a platform of this kind means, think of something like Amazon Marketplace, the eBay, that's one way, but you can also go to Google Play the, or, or the um, um, Apple uh, iStore. That's the maximum I can give you right now. If you're interested in a full presentation, we're going to have also uh, the presentation on the 12th, I'm going to try to put it as a webinar. 
and everybody can log in. I didn't come here to promote Marie Fields as such, so I don't have all the data with me. But if you give me another 15 minutes, I can grab another presentation and start talking about that. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.